ISIS soldiers die after breaking Ramadan fast. On July 7, 45 ISIS militants died from food poisoning after feasting on Ramadan fast-breaking meals in Mosul, Iraq, according to a report by Israeli newspaper Haaretz. Ramadan is a holy month for spiritual reflection and fasting for Muslims, iftar is the evening meal that breaks the fasting period. Shortly after ingesting food, some ISIS militants started showing symptoms of food poisoning that eventually led to their deaths. It was not clear if it was a case of food poisoning or sabotage, but 45 militants were reported to have died, and this was not the only such incident. In November 2014, dozens of ISIS militants died from food poisoning after Free Syrian Army revolutionaries infiltrated their camp and disguised themselves as cooks. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights also reported on July 7 that Kurdish fighters have reclaimed several villages formerly occupied by ISIS. However, The Independent and other news sources questioned the reliability of these reports and recommended the news be taken with a grain of salt. Who knows, it may be something out of The Art of War by Sun Tzu, who wrote, All warfare is based on deception. Keep calm and stay away from the oak trees. Droves of white-haired caterpillars have invaded the British capital, with experts warning they can trigger allergic reactions in humans and pets. UK officials have issued a health warning following an outbreak of toxic caterpillars of the oak processionary moth across London and southeast England. The species is a native of southern Europe, but was accidentally introduced to Britain via imported live oaks in 2005. Each caterpillar contains 62,000 hairs, which are full of spines that can prick skin. They can be released from the body and stay active for up to five years. The hairs contain an irritating substance that can cause skin rashes, eye irritation, sore throats, and breathing difficulties. The British Forestry Commission has begun using biopesticides to help eliminate the caterpillars and have cautioned residents against letting children or pets near affected areas. Traps will also be set for the invasive insects around the 150 hotspots identified by the commission. Hand dryers circulate poop. Hand dryers are blasting crap everywhere. A University of Connecticut study found bacteria blasted from hand dryers in 36 bathrooms within the institution's School of Medicine building. The research, published in Applied and Environmental Microbiology, found traces of the harmless lab-made PS533 in Staphylococcus aureus. The latter is associated with infections, while the former may have traveled from a lab through the air. Researchers also applied their test to restroom hand dryers with HEPA filters, but found that 25% of bacteria were still present. So, hand towels, anyone? Fatal skin disease hits British dogs. A flesh gnawing skin disease is claiming the lives of dogs across the British Isles. According to vetsforpets.com, many cases of Alabama rot have been reported across the British Isles over the last several years. The disease is fatal to 9 out of 10 infected dogs. The cause remains unknown, but one commonality is that most reports come from dog owners who walk their pets in the countryside. Dog owners are advised to avoid muddy forest areas and to clean their pets' paws and legs thoroughly after a walk. Thousands of UK dog owners walk their pets regularly in forest areas, and only a small number of dogs are afflicted with Alabama rot. Privacy violations for all. An international human rights organization has found that China is gathering DNA from a region in the far west that's home to a much oppressed ethnic minority. The Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region is home to about 10 million Uyghurs, a Muslim Turkic group with a long history of discord with the mainland. As such, it's one of the most tightly controlled parts of China. According to Human Rights Watch, authorities in Xinjiang are now collecting DNA samples and biometric data from all residents aged 12 to 65. Police officers collect photos, fingerprints, household registration data, and iris scans during home visits or at designated collection points. Blood types and DNA are gathered through a government health exam called Physicals for All. Data is transmitted to a database and linked to the individual's national ID number. People originally from Xinjiang who have moved to other parts of China are also required to submit their information locally. Over 18 million people have participated in the physical as of November 2017. Though physicals for all is supposedly voluntary, residents are expected and often pressured to take part. 
Human Rights Watch has slammed the mandatory data banking as a gross violation of human rights, adding that carrying it out under the guise of a free health care program makes it even more disturbing. Court thinks give me a lawyer dog refers to a lawyer dog. When TMX said, where are my dogs at? He wasn't referring to his actual dogs. That's not how the morons at the Louisiana Supreme Court would see it, though. A suspect in an interrogation told detectives to just give me a lawyer, dog. Anyone with half a brain understands he's saying give me a lawyer, not a dog that's a lawyer. But that's exactly how the Louisiana Supreme Court ruled. They said the suspect was in fact asking for a lawyer dog and not invoking his right to counsel. Once an individual asks for an attorney, cops are supposed to can it with the questions. But the court clarified that requesting a canine attorney need not cause the police to stop questioning someone. So if a white guy is being questioned and he says, just give me a lawyer, dude, is he really asking for a surfer lawyer? Or if a Hawaiian guy said, just give me a lawyer, brah, is he really just asking for a bra? The ruling by the high court could have serious implications for the suspect charged with sexual assault because it will allow his subsequent incriminating statements into evidence at his pending trial. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. A cat named Max in St. Paul, Minnesota was well known for often sneaking into a local college library, but he didn't become famous until he was eventually banned from the premises, with the image of a poster declaring his banishment going viral online. Max, the orange cat, owned by a McAllister College professor, was caught on camera a month ago sneaking into the college library. Here's the visual evidence of the furry trespasser. He didn't limit himself to the library either and has even paid visits to the university's Spanish and Portuguese department. Basically, Max comes and goes as he pleases, probably thinking he owns the place. He's even been documented straight up sitting on people's laptops while they're trying to study. Although people were always happy to see him, Max was becoming a distraction. There were also some concerns over his safety, and he has since been banned from entering the library. Meanwhile, Max's adventures have inspired people to create illustrations, fake library cards, and even a short comic strip in his honor. Max doesn't give up easily, though. One staffer tweeted that he hangs out by the door and tries to run into the library as soon as someone opens it. Do you know Max the cat? One thing Max's newfound fame has gotten him, some personal face-to-face -face time with McAllister president Brian Rosenberg. Judge bans high school from using nativity scene in Christmas show because it's unconstitutional. Wait, what? A U.S. judge has ruled an Indiana high school's live depiction of the nativity scene in their Christmas show is unconstitutional. No, we're not BSing you here. Last week, Judge John DeGuelio, whom we're assuming is missing at least half a brain, banned Concord High School from using the nativity scene. But why? Well, with the help of the Freedom From Religion Foundation and the American Civil Liberty Union, an anonymous father and son sued the school because they felt the depiction was overtly religious. Judge DeGuelio agreed, saying the scene was unconstitutional because it endorsed religion. Sorry to interrupt stupid here, but isn't Christmas by default a Christian celebration? The school tried to play ball by including depictions of Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and other celebrations, but because these were only briefly shown on screens, while Christianity got a live scene and was the star of the show, Judge DeGuilio noted the school placed a disproportionate emphasis on Christendom. Again, very sorry to interrupt the absurd, but it's a bloody Christmas show! Kinda hard not to avoid a disproportionate connection to, like, uh, Christianity and stuff. The school has since removed the live nativity scene from their Christmas show, as a pre-trial date for the case has been set for January 7th. Now, the school show had included this for decades. And whether you're religious or not, you at least acknowledge Christmas as a Christian celebration. But here's an idea. Rather than abuse the Constitution to get your own little safe space, this Christmas, why not cancel the lawsuit and just choose not to go? Or maybe take part in the show instead?